Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Today, I'm excited to have Fraser Kane on the program. Fraser is a space and astronomy enthusiast and owns the site universetoday.com. He has taken the site from an interesting hobby to a full-time business over the years. I'm very interested in picking his brand on how he's able to grow such a successful site, discussing search engine optimization, and what he thinks the future holds for Google and other search engines. So let's dig right into it. Fraser, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Spencer. How's it going? It's going great. It's going very good. I'm very excited to have you here today. Oh, it's good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so first, why don't you just tell me a little bit about your background? What sort of schooling and career path did you have before you ever created Universe Today? Well, my... uh I mean, back in the beginning, it's almost like Universe Today was my original career path. So as a little kid, I, I love space books. I bought my own telescope when I was 13. Uh, when I was in high school, I was a, I was in my journalism program. I was actually writing articles about how people can see the constellations and what things are up in the sky this month. And so that was my original passion. And then I, uh, I actually went to UBC, the University of British Columbia, for engineering and then went into software development. And uh, and it was only after about 10 years of doing software development um, that I was uh, I was providing consulting for clients on developing websites. And I realized I didn't have any practical experience in developing a website. And so I, I decided, well, I'm just going to pick one of my hobbies at random and, uh, and, and just develop a website on the side. And that would teach me lessons that I could then apply back into, into the advice I was giving my clients. <clears throat> And it was night and day. It was like someone had had explained to me finally in detail how this business actually worked. Once you were there and responsible for putting on the content and and maintaining it and answering people's emails and, and creating this community, it changed everything. And so uh, space and astronomy was the, the hobby that I ha- happened to choose because I did really enjoy it and I wanted to learn more about it. And how this always goes is you spend time – doing something that you love and you're really passionate about it and really interested in it. And these things have a way of turning into a business all on their own. And and so over the years, I was spending more and more time and effort and energy on that website and less on on client work to the point that I was able to to go full time with it. And probably for about the last five, six years now, I've been full time working on this site. Very interesting. Good to know your background um, as far as that you know necessarily website development wasn't uh, sort of your career or the uh, thing that you studied in school but that sort of all along you have been interested in astronomy and space and um, so that you've taken that and built out a website that as you explained initially was sort of something that helped you learn what you were uh, consulting about uh, but then has now become a viable business so very interesting to hear that um, and the background there um, and before we sort of move further and dig a little bit deeper into the site itself, universetoday.com, I was just curious if you had any other sort of business ventures outside of uh, creating websites or before Universe Today. Well, like I said, I I, I was uh, I founded a software company with a friend of mine in Vancouver that was designed to get computers back after they were stolen, called the. Uh, uh, Absolute Software, okay. uh, and then I joined a uh, a web development firm in Vancouver called um, uh, Communicate.com, and we were you know we were doing consulting for banks and and things like that, and uh, and then I actually joined another company uh, in Vancouver called Interactive Tools, and we developed a content management software, kind of like WordPress, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and so that was that's my background is is primarily software development and product management and product marketing. Uh, and then the, but a lot of those skills were really applicable to what I was doing as I was building a hobby. I mean, I've really found that to be successful, you kind of do need to be a jack of all trades in this. So not only do you need to be able to write the content, but you do need to manage your website. In fact, recently I, I actually went back to school and got my my degree in computer science 
to really help me understand, you know, how to administer a Unix server and, and things like that. And so you need to be able to do the marketing and ideally the more of this you can do, video production, graphics, audio, the, the more you can do and the more successful you're going to be, that, that it really takes all of these different skills all at the same time. But yeah, that, that's my main background is mm -hmm. the software. So I, I actually look at this from a business point of view, which, which maybe other websites, especially if people come from a scientific background, they don't have that same perspective as I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's all been very helpful. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, so you've sort of given us uh, why you created the site initially and sort of um, what first got you interested in space or at least what made you decide to build a site on space and astronomy. But can you give us a brief history of the site sort of from inception to where it is now? And yeah. Of course, so, a very general uh, right. sort of history there. Sure. I, I founded the site in 1999. And like I said, I was reading some some books. I was reading a book by Carl Sagan at the time. And I was like, yeah, I like space. Let's let's do that. Um, and, and as I started the site uh, – I used it as a way to teach myself more about the industry. And so what I did was I realized that I was looking all over the internet to find articles about space and astronomy. There wasn't any real single locations that I could go to. And so what I did was I started to, to go to all these different locations and I guess curate. I was curating before curating was a word, right? Or was it was it sort of a, a technique. And I was pulling together all of these news sources and, and putting them and just writing up a newsletter once a day saying, Here's the here are the five big stories that are breaking in space and astronomy, and here are all the different sources that you can go and get more information. So I would provide a quick synopsis and then link out to all of the synopsis. And then I guess a couple of years after doing that, I started to ha I was able to write longer and longer pieces and feel fairly knowledgeable about it. And so I started to write more of that and even started to inject a little of my own opinion. And then probably in 2002, 2003, I switched to just writing full articles. So I just acted like a journalist. If you know, I, I seeked out sources, I wrote full articles, published them on my website, and just decided I was as much of a journalist as the guys from CNN and NBC and and all that. And and that was when everything changed. Once I once I sort of considered them to be my peers, then the then the traffic on the site built up. Um, and then it was probably in the last couple of years, I guess about three years ago or so, uh, when I was able to actually start bringing on other people as well, other journalists. And so now, uh, you know, in many cases, I have sometimes 10 to 15 either full-time or freelance people that work with me on the site as we update the content. So it's a, you know, it's a real, it's a real magazine, and uh, and I treat it like that. So, no, that's good. You gave us some good insights there as far as – it sounds like it was almost a sort of shift in thinking once you sort of thought of yourself as, uh, as, as good as the other journalists out there and sort of their peers, as you mentioned, that you were able to take your site to the next level. Um, you know, Was there a point in the history of the site that really made you realize that it could be a full-time business and what was that? Well, the, the point was actually when AdSense first was released back in 2003, July 2003. And uh, up until that point, I had been every now and then attempting to sell advertising. And as anyone who's sold advertising directly knows, it's just a horrible, painful experience. And especially back then, no one took you seriously at all. Now people take you kind of seriously. But back then, it, it, people just laughed at you. You want my money for your internet? What? Um, and but when Google released AdSense, now suddenly you could just put a little bit of code on your website and start earning revenue from your content. And it it was it it gave me a, a place to start. I mean, the money in the beginning was terrible, but you know, a hundred dollars a month, things like that. But it gave you a context to say, okay, well, you know, if I could scale this up then maybe I can make more money and maybe I can sell other advertising down the road. But at least here's a base. Here's a number to start from. And so I think that was when it switched in my mind from this is a hobby that I'll be doing, but I'll always have to have a regular job to this is something that could possibly be a career for me. I just need to make enough money from the website. I need to, I need to get enough traffic to make to cover for me then would be a reasonable salary. And it wasn't a huge leap then. It was more just a numbers game. 
Okay. So AdSense has been a huge part of the site uh, itself there. And of course, um, I've used AdSense quite a bit on my sites. It's obviously very easy to use, as you mentioned. You just sort of put the code on your site and Google, with its huge amount of advertisers, is able to place a relevant ad according to the content that you have there on your site. So can you give us an idea of how uh, successful Universe Today has been, or I guess even before that, why do you think Universe Today has been successful? Well, <clears throat> so uh, right now the site gets about uh, 4 million unique visitors a month. And that number rises and falls over the course of the year. So uh, during school time, it's actually higher. And then during the summer and over Christmas holiday, it's lower. So it gives me a sense of who my audience is. A lot of it is is people looking for news. And a lot of it is people looking to do research and, and stuff for their schoolwork and things like that. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of where it's at right now. Um, it definitely earns me a good living, uh, and it lets me also employ other people. So, you know, anyone who is who's in this game and gets four million users of visitors a month, although the actual earning the ECPM through AdSense is very low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if if people, you know, my my ECPM is in the two to three dollar range. So, a lot of other people are, you know, get a lot more money than than that. So. But I, you know, this is this is the joke that I always make to people when people wonder if they can make money in their business. Is I always say, well, if I can make money talking about space and astronomy, you can make money talking about anything, right? Absolutely. People are always, people are always concerned about whether they've chosen a niche that is, uh, that, that that it's you know possible to make any money from it, that it's commercial enough. And I really think that you can turn make anything commercial. If people are selling telescopes, then people are spending money, and you can make money in that niche as well if you do a good job. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where where it's at now. There's kind of two parts to it, to where I think this, the really the core of the success of the site came from. One is really early on, and again, a lot of these are really lucky ideas. Um, <clears throat> back again in 1999, one of the things that I started to develop was a mailing list. I said, okay, what I'm going to do is is people will give me their email address, and then once a day I'll send out the newsletter, or once a week I'll send out the newsletter, and and it turned out to be that that is the one thing that is maintained for you know now for whatever ten years, twelve years that people always keep their email address. They they may move jobs, they may change Twitter to Facebook to to Google Plus to all this kind of stuff, but they're always going to keep their email address. And so if your content is good enough. That they want to continue being subscribed to it, then they're then you, they're going to keep keep on with you for, and and grow and grow and grow. And so, you know, early on, I was like, okay, I need to get ten thousand subscribers to my newsletter. And now I have something like seventy thousand. But but that was the that was the goal right from from day one was to was I focused all my energy on that mailing on that email newsletter. And I think that was one of the big keys to the success early on was because then people would reply by email and I could reply back to them and I could incorporate their questions into future stories. And it's just a way to connect and communicate with people that is that is fantastic. The the other big key to this was um, was trying to be the best. And so right again, you know, once I started to write my own articles and once I started to really get a sense of of how people were were reporting on the news. I decided that I was just going to be the best and and then try to figure out what the best meant. And in, in many cases, what the best is, is about finding sources and stories that nobody else is reporting on. And every now and then, I would see people being the best, better than me in in various ways, and then I would just incorporate their ideas. You know, I, I worked for Wired as a blogger for a while, and they taught me a tremendous amount about about how they source out stories and how they, they incorporate them into their into their process and even how they, they pay their writers. Uh, I There's a great site called io9 that does science fiction and I'm just learning nonstop from them. And so whenever someone scooped me or did a better job than me, I would incorporate, almost like the Borg, you know, I just incorporate their methods into my own methods and try to get, get better. And I think the third thing, and in many cases this has been one of the biggest uh, improvements to my business, is search engine optimization. I, about three years ago, stumbled into SEO and in a real big way and really started to understand how you can incorporate the stuff that people are searching for 
into your website in a way that then helps you build traffic in a brand new way. So not just the subscribers, but the people who are actually searching for new material that maybe didn't even know your website existed, but now they find you and now they can start engaging with you and and join your subscription and 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 they're not even sure, you know, later on, a year or two years down the road, they have no idea how they found you, but they did it through the search engines. It's very powerful. I would say it's the most powerful thing. And so if you can get that that two together, great content with a really solid SEO strategy, then it really builds up your your traffic. Thank you so much. You provided some very, very helpful tips for people out there either trying to create their own sites or are somewhat interested in following the same path that you had there. So I appreciate those answers. You mentioned a couple of things, specifically about how you made sort of either that lucky decision or just that good decision to start a mailing list, which is, of course, is then getting you a lot of return visitors to your site over and over again. And that's sort of how you've used search engine optimization to take your uh, business to the next level. Um, can you give us a breakdown of where your traffic is coming from, maybe percentage-wise, at, at least briefly, between search engines, referrals, returning visitors? Um, where is your traffic coming from? Uh, so, so because I put so much effort into the SEO stuff in the last couple of years, about 60% of my traffic comes from SEO. So it's a huge portion of my of my site, maybe too much. Um, <laughs> but uh, and so and then, but then also maybe about 30% comes from repeat visitors, people from my mailing list, people who have me bookmarked, and then another say 20% is coming from referrals, Twitter, Facebook, other websites, Wikipedia, things like that. So <clears throat> yeah, probably 50 to 60% come from the search engines and the rest comes from direct referrals, which is actually a pretty nice ratio, I would say. Um, so the, the SEO has absolutely helped me though and, and really given it a boost in the last couple of years. It's changed everything. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's dig into that a little bit. Um, how you've um, optimized your site. Um, you know, obviously you can attribute a lot of the success to the either keyword choice or um, certainly getting that traffic from the search engine. So maybe just tell us what you've done to either get ranked well in the search engines. Um, what are some of the strategies you've used? Sure. So, I mean, t this is sort of where the, that that other discovery, right? I've had these two major discoveries, the first being the mailing list, the second being SEO. And so I was actually, I was in the car with my daughter. We we're driving down the road and she loves to ask questions. And at one point she asks me, what's the biggest star in the universe? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe I've reported on it. I forget. Um, but, I, but I'll look it up. And so we got home and I looked it up and I found out the answer. It's V.Y. Canis Majoris, by the way. It, uh, uh, okay. It's 1,800 times bigger than the sun. Um, and, and so I, I, and I decided, well, if I've done all the research, why don't I just write up – if it was interesting to my daughter, it's probably interesting to other people as well. So why don't I just write up the article and see what happens? And so normally, right, I would always be reporting on the news – this this happened today, this launch, that astronaut, this mission. But this was something that was evergreen that maybe people have always wanted to know and maybe always will want to know. And so I reported on this. I, I wrote this article and it, it, it sort of had the same kind of response that any article that I would do. You know, my regular readers commented and and – we went back and forth and it got a bunch of reads from my readers. But what was really interesting was then from that point on, it was bringing in regular search traffic month after month from that point on. And in fact, it was the it was bringing in so much traffic that it was the equivalent of, of like a brand – me not having to write an article every three days. And even now, that article is, is one of the top articles on my site. It you know, might be read 10,000 times a month, which is pretty interesting. Um, and so once that happened, I thought, well, maybe I can make lightning strike twice. And so I did an article about why Pluto isn't a planet anymore. And the same thing happened. In fact, even more successful. And so then I, I realized that, that, that what's going on here is, is that it was an entirely new source of traffic that I could write. I could, I could take the kinds of information that, that my audience was looking for and incorporate that content into my website. And so then I just, I, I blended in the informational stuff, uh, you know, the search, essentially the stuff that answers the, the search engine queries in with the regular news reporting that I was doing. 
And in fact, I then even started to learn some of those lessons. So if there's some new breaking story that's happening, I would get a sense for what the search engines would be or how the search engines would respond to this and try and create some of the content to help answer some of these questions early on. If you know, it, I don't know if you remember, there was like people thought they saw Bigfoot on Mars and it was this sort of weird controversy. And so we, <laughs> I don't we wrote an article. That. We wrote an article on, you know, Bigfoot on Mars, question mark, right? Uh -huh. And that matches what what people are going to be looking for. And so we were able to reap that that traffic. And it's just this balance. You know, a lot of people, they go too far in and they, and they only think about the search engines and really just like, how can I get paid? Right. Right. And and I think what it, what you want to do is you want to say, you know what, I have 10 years of knowledge about space and astronomy. And if there is something that that we need, you know, if it's a question that people have about how long it takes to get to the moon or or why Mars is red, we're well positioned. I mean, I can call up astrophysicists. I can talk to astronomers. I can provide as good an answer as Wikipedia. So why not? Why shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. And and once I sort of again had that confidence to start to incorporate that information into the site, that's when the search engine traffic side of the site really built up. And so, about three years ago, I was maybe getting about fifteen hundred visitors a day from the search engines, and now you know I've had days as high as a hundred thousand search visitors wow. in a single day. So, and it's it's directly related to just adding that content to the to the site. And so really, you know, my strategy is very very simple which is figure out what information people want to know and add that to my website in a way that is respectful and high quality. That's it. And there's, mm -hmm. there's no, you know, I mean, we can talk about, ta you know, more specific tactics beyond that, but, you know, I don't make it any more complicated than that. I don't build any links. I don't do any, you know, Fiverr, uh, Facebook buys, or any of that kind of stuff. I just, I just add content and it just, the chips fall where they do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a couple of points that I want to maybe dig a little bit deeper there. Um, first, just to sort of um, sort of reiterate what your uh, sort of discovery was, I guess, that initially you were creating more news topics, more news items, you know, things that happened recently, you were writing about them. And then sort of the shift in thinking for you was, okay, well, I could actually be answering these questions that my daughter has or lots of other people have that people are searching for every day uh, right now, have searched for in the past, and will be searching for in the future about space. And by doing that, you've greatly sort of enhanced the reach that you have with people and the search engines. So I think that's a great point to mention there, sort of those understanding that there are evergreen search topics that people probably will always be searching for. And sort of the second thing uh, that you mentioned is that, yes, you're trying to write answers to the questions that people have. And sort of my question to you is, how do you know what people are asking? How do you find those topics? Uh, if somebody's out there and they want to sort of replicate what you've done, how do you find those topics that people are searching for? Well, the, probably the best tool for that is the Google AdWords keyword tool, which uh, which was is designed by Google to help people manage their their paid search marketing, and so it allows them to to pay a dollar a click or whatever is the price to be able to have their their ads show up against various search queries. But the great thing about that tool is it'll tell you that 4,500 people a month are searching for this keyword and 37 people a month are searching for that keyword. And so if you use that tool quite a bit, you can build up a really substantial list of keywords that just really maps out the whole keyword space for you. And so you can, over time, build up this huge, this huge database of, of the keywords that people are searching for. And so, for example, you know, my, my database has about 40,000 keywords in it. So I've got about 40,000 keywords that are related to space and astronomy that I, you know, that I manage and I think about and consider as I'm adding, creating new content for my website. A certain percentage of them I've targeted and a certain percentage of them I, I haven't and will will down the road. So, okay. so that's, you know, that's, that's the, without a doubt, the, the best method, the best way to find out those keywords. Now, uh, you know, as I was going through this process, because I come from a computer science background, I needed to automate it and turn it into a tool. And so I started out by maintaining a local database on my, on my laptop 
in that that I was able to incorporate spreadsheets and and even directly query the the AdWords tool and pull in keywords and then sort of analyze them and keep some and you know blacklist some and get rid of others and just and just organize them and figure out which keywords I'd already targeted and which ones I hadn't and track my rank and all that kind of stuff and so you know definitely if you do this in any sort of large fashion it becomes pretty complicated to to do manually you do need some kind of tool to to do it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and so you know I, I and this is the you know keywords some a lot of people know that we've created this separate tool called keyword strategy and it's essentially if anyone else wants to follow my footsteps use the same tool that i use it, we we've created it and made it available and it's got really cool features and yeah just sort of essentially it's but it's but it's designed for this philosophy which is that it's all about creating content targeting keywords, becoming a keyword pack rat, and then trying to fill in all of the holes over time to, to create a really good, useful content uh, library for your potential visitors. Right. Yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. You're essentially creating a master plan for your site based on the keywords that you hope that you can uh, provide relevant content to that people will be searching for hopefully for a long period of time and you've created a keyword strategy uh, tool and people can find out more about that over at keywordstrategy.org yeah uh, correct yes yep. and uh, I know as well you have uh, a blog there as well where you have other sort of tips uh, as far as search engine optimization and things of that nature as well that they can follow along with um, I do want to dig a little bit deeper with sort of your strategies for ranking in the search engines. You make it sound as simple as though you're just targeting specific keywords, writing relevant content, and that's it. What happened to the link building? Right, so I, and this is, you know, maybe for your audience it's fairly new, but there's a lot of communities that I'm, that I'm fairly active in, and I'm the guy who's been saying, don't bother link building now for probably three two, three years. And, and, you know, people call it the Fraser method at this point. Um, and <laughs> right. And so my feeling is that, that link building, right. Or, or in the past, what people would do is they would, they would use some algorithm to choose a keyword. So they would say, okay, I'm going to take all of amazon.com. I'm going to, I'm going to grind it through some algorithm, some piece of software. And it's going to say, this is the keyword, you know, I need to be writing articles about trailer hitches or, or, I don't know, um, snowboards. Mm -hmm. And so then they would then, th then that is the keyword that they are targeting. And so then they will go and, you know, create pages on their website. They'll, they'll optimize for that keyword. And then they'll go on a massive link building campaign to, to try and get that specific keyword to rank up highly in the search results. Ideally, you want to be number one. If you get to number one, then you get lots of traffic. And, and my feeling about that is, is that I think they, un, they they don't realize that time spent link building is still just time. So so if you're trying to uh, if you're trying to like optimize for any one specific keyword, like as I said, like trailer hitches, truck trailer hitches, then then you're you're deciding that you think that that keyword is easy to rank for, and and then but it might require 100. Uh, and say say it takes you one hour for each link that you want to get, whether you're writing an article and you're putting it on some kind of article software site or you're contacting other webmasters and asking them to link to you or things like that. I mean, it just takes time. And so my feeling is, is that I can't predict this stuff in advance. I would much rather spend that 100 hours to write 100 different articles and, and put that all on my website. That on my website is a place I control. Putting... Right. You know, contacting other people and trying to get links on their website is something that I, that is outside of my control. I have no ability to sort of know what's going to happen into the future. I don't know how, how good the quality is going to be. And at the end of the day, you're really just trying to manipulate Google Google search results. You're trying, you're voting for yourself by creating these links and putting them on other sites. And and Google has stated, you know, in many times in the past that that they don't want you to do that. And so mm -hmm. again, it's sort of it's kind of risky. And in fact, you know, the day that we're talking is right after this this April twenty fourth apocalypse, which a lot of sites got got hit really hard. Um, and so my feeling has always just been that that it's better to instead of trying to figure out in advance which keywords are going to do well for you, just target them all. 
right? Mm-hmm. That that in, you know, if you've identified that there are thirty thousand keywords in your in your niche, then just target them all in the best way that you can. It might take you a lifetime, but instead of getting a thousand visitors to one keyword, you want to get a thousand visitors to a thousand keywords. You could you could easily not rank number one for any keywords, and yet still get mountains and mountains of search traffic. You know, as I right. mentioned, I get the I get you know more than a million between one and two million uh, search visitors a month from or sorry I get you know whatever two million search visitors a month from more than a million and a half keywords mm-hmm. right so I so I get a huge number of <clears throat> a variety in the traffic that comes into my website that's because I've created content that that crosses all these different areas of my of my niche and so so it's it's I find that the whole link building method, in my opinion, is too complicated. I don't understand it. I I don't think that anyone really knows what works and what doesn't work. And so I've always offered my method just as an as an alternative. Like if you if you love link building and you've got a great you know networking community, then by all means use them and and by all means get links and and do whatever you you know how to do because because it's working for you. And if you hate link building. In the past, everyone said, well, that's too bad, right? If you hate link building, then you don't have a choice because link building is what you've got to do. And my, and what I've always been saying is, no, if you hate link building, there is another way, which is that you just focus all that energy on your website and you, and building social relationships with your audience, and and you can build up traffic from the search engines over time. It, the traffic looks very different, but at the end of the day, traffic is traffic, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it, it gives you what you need. And so, you know, for me, I just found the link building a little too complicated and a little too dependent on other people, and it was really hard to control the experience. So it's so it's maybe I'm a control freak. I'm not really sure, <laughs> um, you know. But I just I just wanted to make sure that if I was going to write an article, I just wanted to put it on my own website and and have it be a great article as opposed to mediocre articles or c- cutting corners on on other people's websites. Mm-hmm. So so that's that's been that's been my approach, and and it is literally that simple. That you, you figure out what people are searching for, and you write content that 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 gives them the answers to their questions, that meets their needs. And if you can do those two things, and really build a relationship with your readers, then good things seem to come your way. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. with a brand new website that has no authority at all. I mean, this is the complaint that people always give me: is well, Fraser, you've got lots of authority. But I think we're at the point now where we've seen enough other people follow this methodology that it, that they're seeing a lot of success and then all of the fears and the concerns and the and the nervousness about the Google updates they all just go away because you're building this relationship with your audience and mm-hmm. that can never get taken away from you yeah no great points excellent points uh, for people listening out there for sure and some things that I can take away as well for my own business um, I do want to point out though or at least you know clarify for listeners out there yes you're you don't go out and actively build any links to your site but you do have lots of links pointing to your site correct and maybe tell oh, us yeah. how that happens well right so I've I, you know if you use various tools if you look at say majestic SEO I think I've got about half a million links pointed at the website right and and the the way this works there's sort of two parts to it. One is you you build relationships with other people, and and I think for a lot of people they see other people as as sort of resources to be exploited. So if I reach out to Spencer, and I'm sure you get tons and tons of this, right? Is someone you've never heard of, never talked to you, reach out to you and say, you know, hi Spencer, my name is, you know, and then here is my website. Could you please link to me? Yep. You know, because I'm in your niche too, and you're like, well, it's like, is that is that all I am to you? Is just a place to put a link? No, no, thank you, right? <laughs> but, right. but, but even our conversation, right? I mean, you were you were having some questions that you were expressing on your site. I was a reader of your site. I reached out to you and said, hey, you know, let's talk about it. Maybe I've got some ideas. I can help you out. And and here we are, whatever, three four conversations later, recording a podcast. I don't think, and I think I actually did link to you because I because you had written something that I found really interesting. So so the point being that you you want to build these relationships, these friendships. Um, you know, uh, some of the people that in, in my community are my are my absolute best friends. I visit them, I fly out to their houses and hang out with them and vacation with them and 
and those are those real relationships and that pays off huge over time not necessarily in ways that you're ever expecting and so again if you're working in this kind of alone and you don't know the really know the names and they don't know you and then then build those relationships and friendships and help people out and make their lives better um that's really key and and that's sort of the the sort of the first part to it the second part is to create the kind of content that is worth linking to and a lot of people call this link bait right mm mm-hmm. mhm where you where you go and you create something so super awesome that people are going to want to link to it either because it's controversial or because uh, it's re- it's a really well done take on a certain piece of content and so a lot of the times when I'm thinking about something that's coming up I think I'll think well you know can we do something that a lot of people are going to want to link to and if in and, and so and to even you know you you tweak it and you make it try and make it better and you want things to go a little bit viral and if you're lucky things show up on you know we probably get on slashdot or on reddit or things like that once a month a couple of times a month and each time that has an ampli- amplification so if your article shows up on slashdot then it's going to show up on 100 other websites shortly after that and so you just get links but but i never reach out and ask for links it's just you get it through the relationships that you have and the and creating the kind of content that people are going to want to link to mm-hmm. and 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 I don't try to overthink it I just I just write content and if it and and if it does well I'll try to figure out why it did well but I won't really spend a lot of time and effort trying to to boost things up yeah no that's great and I wanted to clarify that point for people that even though you're not actively out trying to build links as of course we know lots of other people in the SEO community are you do get lots of links through a natural method through great content other people because they uh, like what you've written or like you or for whatever reason do give you that link to your site so of course you do have lots of links pointing to your site so I just wanted to sort of uh, point that out for anyone listening that uh, uh, might have wanted some clarification there so now I do want to move into something that is more recent uh, just sort of was announced yesterday um, by Google officially um, that uh, some are calling it an over optimization penalty uh, but sort of a bigger picture here Google is always going through lots of changes they're all always trying to sort of update the formula that you're they're using to rank websites there's been the panda update and now this more sort of recent update uh, just happening yesterday that is affecting lots of rankings for people out there they're seeing their sites that were ranking you know number one or at the top of Google now or are, are nowhere to be found and of course that's affecting their traffic and their business uh, to a great degree um, can you give us an idea if this is affecting your business and maybe just your thoughts on sort of the evolution of search engines in general well, so far, since the beginning of Panda until now, I haven't been affected by any of the updates. So even the one that, that just happened. And, you know, I, but but at the same time, I don't know necessarily whether I've done anything right um, or I got lucky because, you know, I've definitely been adding content to my website that is designed to attract people coming from the search engines. So, uh you know, depending on where Google considers that, you know, maybe I'm due for a penalty. I'm not really sure. I've tried to mm-hmm. provide the best quality content that I can, but as soon as you start to rely on the search engines, you are taking a big risk, and right. I'm taking that risk as much as anybody else is, and I'm deeply aware of of that risk and how such a wonderful source of traffic that has totally transformed my business could turn or could disappear overnight, and I could be left with no traffic. So, so I think. That, it's like anyone who's listening to this right now. If you depend on the search engine traffic, I'm I'm very nervous about what the future of that traffic is going to hold. Um, at the same time, though, Google has really said right from day one what it wants you to do and what it doesn't want you to do. And I think that that over time, in the past, people said, you know, they, they've said build good quality content, don't artificially build any links to yourself, don't create use spammy tactics, things like that, right? And I think a lot of people have just said, well, yeah, that's what they say they want, but but they have no way to really catch me, so I'm just going to keep mm-hmm. this up. And over the last two years now with Panda, 
I guess what? No, maybe year. God, it's been very fully yeah. recent, right? Um, well, last year with Panda, and then this over optimization penalty, which really smells like a brand new algorithm, something completely different, designed to to go after something else, and all of the warnings, the unnatural link warnings that people have been getting, that that Google that that people have got been able to get through on these purely because. Google hasn't chosen to optimize or not, not, not to penalize them. But now we're seeing for the first time that that links to your website can actually penalize you in the search results. When before, links just couldn't help you. you know, if they found that you had some spammy bad links to your website, they would, they would remove their assistance, but you wouldn't actually get penalized. But now it seems like people are actually getting penalized. So... So and maybe that's just them just saying you know we're sick of of people trying to build build links and 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 there's going to be a sort of a penalty coming to it. So so but Google had right from day one has told you what they think is the, is their compass, right? So you may not know their individual specific tactics, but you know overall what their compass is, and and you can follow that same compass, which is that you want to create content for users, for readers, for visitors, not for search engines. You want something that's going to stand the test of time, that is as relevant and as useful 10 years from now as it is today, that <clears throat> that you know, under any manual review, you know, if I showed my website to Matt Cutts, I would want him to subscribe, right? Mm -hmm. I want him to be so excited at what he sees that he wants to sign up. That's when you that's and and you know whether you're doing that or whether you're cutting corners or whether you're you're not putting in that level of, of value and quality. And uh, yeah, and, that, and that's that now, I think people have always known that that's what they need to do. And this is the message that I've been really trying to impart to people. But now it feels like Google is figuring out ways to enforce it. Right. <laughs> so it's bringing people into the into the light. And a lot of people who are really diehard, you know, I'm going to build my links, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cut corners are really starting to embrace this longer uh, longer term strategy, which I think is <clears throat> which is good for for visitors. And I think as soon as you <clears throat> as soon as you step away from that those fundamentals, uh, you're in risky territory and it's and it, and you see a lot of people in these search engine forums who are complaining and they're really angry at Google because Google is destroying their business. but uh, you know, this is it. This is the game you're playing. You know, you have you have made yourself completely dependent on that traffic and the revenue that comes from that traffic. At the same time, following methodologies that that Google really doesn't want you to do, and you take your life in your own hands. So, so I think that I think this update, as we talked today, was overreaching and kind of unfair to a lot of people. And so I don't think it's going to last. They're going to roll it back. Mm -hmm. But I think the underlying intent is is for the long term. So they're going to continue in the same vein and try to get this algorithm right, just like they're trying to get Panda right. Which which I don't know. I don't think they've even gotten Panda right yet. So so we're we're still years from this being final and high quality. But I think this is you know it's obvious the direction that Google is pointed, and people should get their ducks in a row. You know now. Yeah, no, I think the points that you make are very, very relevant, obviously, to what's going on uh, today and uh, probably for the long term for search engines that their goal has always been to rank the best and highest quality sites that are out there. And those that are sort of cutting corners, as you mentioned, or doing things that they shouldn't be doing um, are going to be the sites that suffer the most. So, yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I mean, if you're not building, a, I mean, the the specific tactics change over over the years. But like as I said, when I started Universe Today, Google didn't exist, so, right? right? So you know, there's some context. Um, you know, I I picked doing essentially email marketing as my first strategy in the website and building up a big mailing list. And then over time, I've incorporated Facebook and Twitter and all these kinds of things. But as long as you're focusing on the value for your audience and building up as much of a direct connection to your audience as you can, trying to transition people from Google and Facebook and Twitter to some more direct method, be it an RSS subscription feed or an email newsletter, things like that, that you can take control over your own destiny. So as long as you're just completely dependent on Google, things get difficult for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So 
Now, having said that, of course, there still are going to be lots of people that want to sort of replicate your success that you've had with Universe today. Uh, they're going to want to build an information-based website, and perhaps there's people that are either just getting started, or there's other people that they know they want to build a site and provide some great content, but they haven't quite settled on an idea, let's say. How would you advise people go about sort of brainstorming for an idea that they wanted to create something that's as, perhaps as large as Universe today? Well, I think that I, you know, for the things that I did right, I think the thing that I did wrong was I picked a a really bad, really difficult niche to go into. I think my life would have been a lot easier if I had just built something or sold something or created a product or invented something. And, and so, okay. you know, being in the informational space is really tough and and I think you can just look at look Apple compared to to other to other products. You know, Apple makes iPads and iPods and and iPhones, and they make a thing, and people love them for it, and they're making enormous amounts of money. And and so I think that that the, the before you try and move into a pure information space, uh, you know, I would have a deep think about about other kinds of of businesses that you can run. The, you know, you still want search engine traffic, but if you you know, if you, I've got one friend that is a knitter and she's been selling knitting patterns on Ravelry and, and has now started creating her own kinds of really cool notebooks and rulers for knitters mm -hmm. and is starting to brand her own, um, yarn. She's doing way better with the amount of traffic that she gets than what I'm doing. Um, there's another guy, uh, Dave H. So this grab apple and he writes a really great e-commerce book. And just provides tremendous information on how to do e-commerce. That you know, a lot of people put so much effort into creating their website, but they don't actually figure out what it is, you know, what their business model is, what they're going to make money from. Beyond, I'm going to, you know, the AdSense model, which is really difficult, and it's really, it's like, it's great because you can actually make money from it. But I would say it is the hardest, worst form of revenue that you can get. And what you want to do is you want to switch to the other end of that ladder. You want to get, go after the thing that gives you the highest revenue, the highest benefit, which is, which is selling something that you've made, right? That is mm -hmm. the that is the most effective, highest profit, least effort thing that you can do. But a lot of cases it's kind of complicated, which is why a lot of people avoid it. But you know, for for and so this is this is part of the thinking with keyword strategy, which was. You know, my method was successful for me for building up the traffic on Universe Today. I'm sure it will be successful for other people for their own their own websites. So let's sit down and let's actually create a software product that people can use. And I know you've done that as well. You've got mm -hmm. a you've got your own sort of long tail keyword discovery tool, mm -hmm. and and that it's when you actually take the time to to figure out how, how your capabilities align with what people are looking for, and you actually solve people's problems then you know you're really on the right track because you can build these customers directly and you can sell your products to them directly and now you're you're completely immune to the search engines. The search engines are a great source of traffic, but you just don't need them. You know, the irony of course is with what we're doing with keyword strategy, it's all through word of mouth and and relationships and people trying out our trials that people are finding out about about our software. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot more people are having success by by Solving a problem for other people. And the way I was always describe it is, you know, when you see problems, those problems are just are are just business business opportunities. You know, if people's iPhone batteries don't last long enough, that's a business opportunity. If people don't know how to make money from their website, that's a business opportunity. Uh, you know, if people with certain kinds of clothing, whatever, whatever you know how to do, take it. You know, try to come up with a real product, a real solution, sell a real thing beyond just trying to create information. The information is something to serve it. You know, and so I think if I was to able to start everything all over again, you know, university might look very, very different. And maybe I can still transition it into that. But I think that's the that's the mistake that I made was that I didn't figure out a, a real business from day one, and now I'm forced to be a publisher, which is mm -hmm. a very low margin, very difficult business. And so mm -hmm. in fact, it, talk anyone out of it, you know, <laughs> try to come up with a real business that you sell. Sell a thing, manufacture a thing, distribute a thing, consult a thing, write a thing, <laughs> record a thing, right. make a thing and and that solves people's problems. And you will be so far ahead of your competition, you you know, 
it's it's the best way to go. Okay, I I want to follow up with a couple of uh, clarifications or just you know dig a little bit deeper there. You mentioned a couple of things, and it goes sort of against the grain I think of what uh, people think usually. People think of the informational business or an informational site as being a, an easier type of business in a way because it's something that you can put out there on the internet. Traffic's coming from Google, and you sit back and uh, just you know take take your check to the bank, right? So <laughs> yeah, the passive um, income, but, the myth of passive it, income. Well, yeah, and and we'll go into that here in a second. But sure. uh, you you did specifically mention that you thought that having an information based site or business is more difficult actually than having a product based site. You said it, it it's much easier to have. Um, a business if you have your own product, uh, for example. Can you dig into a little bit deeper? Why? What's so difficult about running Universe today? Why Why um, is that more work than having your own product? Well, the margins. I mean, the you know, I get 4 million visitors, like I said, 4 million visitors, 3 to 4 million visitors a month to the website. And mm -hmm. in any other business, that would be an enormous amount of money. Right, and it's it, and it's just in the business that I'm in, the publishing business, that it's that it's just not that the margins are very very low because because people are just here, they're looking for information. There's no long term, you know, I'm 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 providing value and I'm solving very little problems for people. Right, they want to know how long it takes to get to Mars. I can help them out with that as they write their research report or, or whatever. But but it's completely different th than if I created my own. You know, my own range of if I created my own telescope that was better than other telescopes out there and and was able to promote that on on my website, you know, that would be uh, then I would wouldn't need more than a couple of customers a month to to make the exact same or more money. So so it's really it's about the margins. It's about the volume that you have to get up to and building up to 3 million search visitors or 3 million visitors a month to the website 3 4 million is is rough it's it's a it's a lot of work so i think that that if you come up with a product that really solves people's problems you know and you can see what's happening on kickstarter kickstarter is a great example mm -hmm. to see to see how people are solving people's problems they're like hey i've got a really cool um there's this watch this that that's powered by that connects your iphone and gives you another display and it was one of the largest um uh, fund raised funds on Kickstarter. They, mm -hmm. they raised millions over wow. just a couple of days, and so there's a real big demand. And so, if you can come up with this with the the thing that people want, then the then the traffic really comes to you. And as opposed to you creating that informational resource, it's just you know it's just it's a having an informational website is attractive to people because it's very easy to get into it's very easy to start with and it's a and it's definitely a great place to start if you don't know how to build a website i would absolutely start with an informational site mm -hmm. but at the same time because it's easy for you to get into it's easy for other people to get into as well and do a better job than you right and very so, low barrier to entry very low barrier to entry and at the same time you know these informational websites are completely dependent on google or to really for their traffic and so again it's so much harder to be able to build a very sustainable, very long-term business that is um, that isn't that isn't based on Google, and and that's you know, and that's the, the difficulty that I found as well with Universe Today is just you're constantly looking over your shoulder, and even I've built up a tremendous following on on all the social networks and all that kind of stuff, and 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 I'm able to eke out a living, but as you know, I look at what the product guys are doing, and I'm just like, oh man, I wish I. <laughs> I wish I had done that from day one because they're doing so much better than me. And and so I think that's and, – and that has informed a lot of my thinking with keyword strategy, which is the actual tool itself. You know, We right. create a software tool. It um, – we only have a few hundred customers that we have to help out and you know, it provides a great revenue for me and for my partner, my programming partner. So it's just – you just – once you know how to run a website – then you can focus all that effort on building a product and solving people's problems and really delighting them. And I just don't feel, you know, I get gushing emails all the time about people using keyword strategy, the tool, much more than I get, even though I only have, as I said, we have a few hundred customers, we have lots of trial users, but that's where the, you know, it seems to me that's where we're making a difference in people's lives. I don't get a lot of email that, you know, we're changing people's lives with Universe Today, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
No, so that's it. It's just great you know, points. Yeah, it's just it is just as I said, low barrier to entry, easy to get into, which is great for beginners. But once you get really good at what you're doing, go to the other end of the spectrum, create a product, sell something. Yeah. So, and in fact, a uh, couple of points there as well that I might want to point out is that you started Universe today in uh, 1999, I think you said. Yeah. And um, you know now it's been you know 13 years later. Or, um, of course, you're doing well with it. But keyword strategy, on the other hand, you created uh, how long ago was that? I think we went live a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And you've yeah. been able to ramp that up mm -hmm. much quicker now into a viable business. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. I, I think that underscores your point there that if you're able to create a product, um, as much as we like to hear about passive income and getting that free search engine traffic, uh, it actually, to your point, can be a much quicker way to um, a viable business by creating a product than uh, going after maybe an informational website. Yeah. I mean, your goal, you will measure your success by the number of people who email you and say, you have changed my life. I can't believe how wonderful what you've done. Thank you so much. You know, that's what you want. That should be the, that really is what tells you you're doing a good job or a bad job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you can sort of marry the two ideas, you know, come up with that great product. And then of course you can build a website surrounding that and, and target uh, search terms and do great. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, now, and, and this is it. I mean, we talked about this, this myth of passive income, right? I think it's important to get that to get that squared away, or at least my opinion of it. You know, other people might disagree. <laughs> but but for me, I really call it the myth of passive income that that a lot of people think that you can, you know, build up your website and and then kick back on the beach and just put in a couple of hours a month and, and do really well. And I really don't think that's possible. I think there's a I think that the people, even Tim Ferriss, you know, the guy who wrote the four hour work week, he works like a dog. Sure. Right. Yep. Because, because I think that, that everything is changing. And in fact, everything is changing now so fast. There's so much new information. There's so many new methodologies, you know, Pinterest barely existed a year ago and now it's like the third largest social network and you have to be all over Pinterest. You don't have to, but there's real benefits if you are. Right. So I think we're seeing that, that there are many advantages to this business you know you can work in your pajamas you can work from home you can spend time with your family and and be a stay at home you know i'm a, i'm essentially a stay at home dad i'm able to to be you know pack my kids off to school and i'm there when they come home from school um but i also sometimes work at midnight to sort of compensate right um and so the, and you get to work on something that you love and you get to work with people that you really enjoy and respect and all these are fantastic but what you don't get is passive income. It is still work like any other job in any other business. And the moment you take your eye off the prize and the moment you try to set up yourself up for some kind of retirement is when your underlying business disappears. And so I think that, that anyone who's trying to get into this as a passive lifestyle, if I could just make you know $5,000 a month and then I could just sit on the beach, that, that you would find that $5,000 disappearing very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. That it's the constant effort, it's the constant updating, it's the service nonstop, which is what creates an, an ongoing and sustainable business. And so mm -hmm. for anyone who's trying to get into this, because they think it's passive, that should be the last reason you're getting into it. You know, I love the fact that the things I do today or, or the money I make today comes from the things I did a year ago. That's really cool that I'm, that I'm compensated for my cleverness, not through my you know, through the hours I spend. But right. at the end of the day, it is all about, is still, it is about the work. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, obviously I've sort of gone about it in a different way than you have. I do have, you know, lots of websites that are all sort of bringing in a little bit, um, you know, on their own. But I've always sort of said along the whole way, even on my own blog, that, you know, this is a risky business. And I am very well aware that it's not a passive income. And I actually try to make that very clear to my readers as well, is that even though this is as nice as it sounds that, hey, I can build a site and maybe a year from now is still bringing in some income, whether I do anything to it or not. It's a lot of work, you know, because sites lose their rankings. Uh, you have to come up either with new ideas. It's a constant, constant business if that's something that people want to go into. So I think that's a great point. I, you know, could not agree more. 
that um, it sort of passive income really is a myth. This is, you know, it's a real business. You know, if you're going to build an informational site, it's a real business. You have to be very involved. And, you know, I love your points about uh, creating a product as well. Um, now, I just want to move on to just a couple of last questions here. Um, do you have any future business plans outside of universe today and keyword strategy or other websites um, ideas on the near horizon here with universe today I really think I've picked what I'm going to do with the rest of my life okay you know I've chosen my career for my whole life and I love it so much and I you know I get to interview astronauts and I get to go and watch rockets launch and so it is super cool and and it is exactly what I love and it fits enough and it also blends in enough of my other interests, software development and managing a website and all that kind of stuff. So I really feel like I've I've picked, chosen my career for my whole life. And now it's going to it's going to look different 10 years from now than it does today. You know, there's going to be books and maybe we'll be doing documentaries and maybe I'll be running a space agency. Who knows? Right. So, Mm -hmm. right. And so I think that, that, that is that I've picked the theme of my life. Uh, keyword strategy is, is a chance for me to also stretch, uh, my other interest, which is in the software development side. And the two really go hand in hand. And so as I make discoveries on Universe Today, we apply those methods back over on keyword strategy. And this is this whole idea of eating your own dog food, right? Which is I use, I only use keyword strategy as my method to manage and build my traffic on my website. And so if I have problems or if I, things are, are bothering me about keyword strategy, we fix them as opposed to just sort of being hands off and thinking, well, this is what I think people want to know. But no, I, you know, any new ideas that I have, I just, they're all related to what I'm doing with Universe today. And, and unless something comes along that I love more, which, you know, again, we're at 13 years now and I still seem to enjoy it, mm-hmm. uh, then I can't imagine. And in fact, it's when I have these, these notions. I mean, I have lots of ideas for products all the time and I, right. I figure out ways to, to get them out there in other ways. Like, uh, there's a pod, there's a great show that I like called This Week in Startups, which is hosted by Jason Calacanis. Mm-hmm. He's, he started Weblogs Inc. and, and Gadget and things like that. Um, he runs Mahalo right now. And, uh, and I love the show and it's a, it's a great show. And so what I do is he runs a s- series called, uh, Guess the Fake Startup. And so I, whenever I come up with ideas, I just write them in as fake startups and send them into, <laughs> into the show and see if I can trick Jason with them. So, uh, so far I haven't gotten it. I've gotten everybody else on his show, but I haven't, haven't tricked him yet. He's too, he's too good at it. Uh, so, so that's all. No, I, I come up with ideas all the time and I will often share them with my friends or, or just post them, you know, on Google plus and things like that. Here's a crazy idea I just had, you know, someone run with it cause I don't have time. Yeah. You know. Focus. Your focus, f- focus. Focus is key. Yeah. I yep. mean, you, you know, you, when you say you run 50 websites that I just can't imagine, it would drive me crazy. I, you know, two websites right now is the very limits of my ability it, with a team of people to help me out. I, uh, I can't imagine running, you know, more than one website. And in fact, I, I, I'm doing a podcast as well on mine and I have a whole, one whole episode just dedicated to how many websites should you have? Hint one, <laughs> just one. Yeah. You know, that, that you diversify within your website. A lot of people say, oh, I should have 10 different websites or 50 different websites because of diversification. If any one website gets hit, then the others will be fine. But you can diversify within your one website in a way that compensates and keeps you safe, especially if you're following, you know, long-term sustainable methods and not trying to game the system. Mm-hmm. No, great points. Excellent points uh, for everybody listening out there. Um, now, where is the best place that people can follow along with what you're doing? Well, hmm, um, there's actually a bunch of discussion forums that I'm a member of that that you know I try to pitch in and help people out. So, uh, so for the space side, uh, if people are really interested in that, uh, we do a podcast every week called Astronomy Cast, which which is great, much beloved. Um, and then I do a lot of stuff on Google plus, we do a lot of really cool shows through Google, Google hangouts. And so I'm, 
I'm quite active over on Google Plus. Uh, you can also for the for the SEO side, there's a couple of forums that I'm an active member on. Uh, one is Keyword Academy. Another is called the Zen Duck Pond, and I <clears throat> contribute there. Uh, as mm-hmm. well as we have our own forum on keyword strategy, where I'll, I'm happy to answer questions and and provide advice. I'm also blogging and writing articles on on keyword strategy. Uh, but I, I just, I don't have a lot of time. Um, right. So, so it's hard to kind of write. I do need to focus more, more of that there as, as best I can. We also do some hangouts and, um, for keyword strategy where I can help people with their advice. The other thing I do is anyone who wants to join keyword strategy and wants to, uh, you can sign up for a free 30 day trial and you can try out the software for free, unlimited, go crazy. Um, and then only decide at the end if it's if it's for you or if it's not for you. But p- as part of that process, you know, we'll send you an email that says, "Hey, do you want a free consult with me?" And so you can then just look at my calendar, pick a time, and we'll talk on Skype or phone. And I'll just take 30 minutes. And we can talk about whatever you want. We can talk about your business, my business, your ideas, space, um, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll try and sort of give you as much advice and, and information as I can in that time to sort of get people on the right on the right footing. And so. That's almost the most effective way is just, you know, let's spend 30 minutes and talk about your business and, and I'm happy to help out. And it's, it'll sound very similar to what we're talking about right now on this <laughs> podcast, which is, you know, and that's, and that's part of the process. So if you sign up for a free trial, you'll, you'll get a chance. You, you can then book an appointment and we'll, we'll coordinate. Fraser, you're a busy man. I don't know how you have time to do it all. Um, so I appreciate your time here very, very much imparting your words of wisdom. Uh, do you have any sort of last bit of closing advice for anybody out there listening? Well, I think that, you know, I, for parts of it, I was kind of negative about the passive income. I think this is the best business on earth. I think that, that this ability to work from home, to contribute to your income is, is absolutely transformational and is going to change everything. And if you have even the slightest interest in this, get get into it and try it out, and learn and don't be afraid to make mistakes and and at the same time, don't try to cut corners. Like try to do things the hard way because it's by doing things the hard way that you really learn the most and really create the most value and benefit for yourself. And so I'm really excited. I love you know half of the reason why I do these consults is I love to talk to people and hear what they're doing and hear their businesses and 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 help them out. I I genuinely enjoy. I would say the my favorite thing in life is to help people with their businesses. And so half of the me doing consults is I get to hear and help people out. And it's really fun. So so that's all. I think, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you're interested in this space, it is absolutely possible to make a living from it. It can be as fulfilling as you want. And, um, and you know, don't let anyone hold you back, you know, even Google. So I think it's great. Absolutely. No, great points. I just want to, again, say thank you very much for your time. Uh, the things that you've shared here are definitely helpful to me and to the listeners out there, I'm sure. So we appreciate it very much. All right, man. Well, I, if I can help out in any other way, just let me know. And uh, maybe we'll talk again uh, you know, down the road when you're at episode 100. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate it very much. Everyone out there listening, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this episode on the Niche Pursuits podcast. All right. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.